get this one to get that one. Alrighty, hon. I want to be sure it's all. Actually, I move to recess yeah. until the cameras can all be set up. Yeah. Second yep, I'll second that. And I'll call for the two of us. All those in favor say aye. 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 We're actually in recess until the cameras can get all set up. So. <laughs> That's right. We're responsible. 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 the last what we were going up over the bridge the last counter is that the one that we saw going over the bridge the ones that go across the street those are not Okay. She said two, I thought it was four. 67 or 47 yeah. I should know you're always right. 680 of them were over the portfolio. I swear I didn't go that way. I swear. Last Thursday, I visited every single house, like everyone when I was home, and when I talked to them, gave them stats for that information. It's you. I mean, it's a closed road, so it's going to be you and your neighbors. There's a Honda yes. CRV with handicap plates that drives like a bat out of hell on Harry's Drive. Is that either a white or a black, black SUV? Yeah, like yeah. a little yeah. mini, one of those little tiny Honda SUV things. No, okay. CRV, I think. It's a full size SUV, black, or white. Black. And a white one that speaks it as well. Oh, okay. Okay. Are, are we out for business? Uh, 
and he said, asked me 20 times where we're down there doing the hot dog. Yeah. She got like, if you didn't have a lot. Yeah. I didn't push the right button. This is the one I want. Yeah. That's the one. Oh, just a minute. I got a problem. Okay, hold on. Is your card not in there? No, the card is full, and I don't. Yeah, it all records on a little SD. All right, everybody, I'm going to uh, reconvene the select board meeting of uh, July 23rd. It's now 6 p.m. We started at 6 o'clock in non public. I've passed along to our recording secretary the pieces from that for the minutes. And uh, we will start with our meeting. Uh, just a reminder, at 7 o'clock, Paul Connolly is coming in with perhaps with Mr. Jennison, is that his name, for uh, talking to us about Classics Roads. And at 7.30, the new chair of the Conservation Commission, Tamara Nechikowski, will be in to talk to us there as well. All right, uh, as we start, approval of minutes, July 16th. I had, um, I, I, had I know comment. you did, yeah. What was my comment? Your comment was you didn't like the way it was written. It sounded like she didn't want to come. Oh, and yes, she had the text sent an email prior. prior right, to well, I had no idea about that. Right, you so. guys sounded surprised. But that's all right. I just put those. She was unable to. Okay, she wasn't able to. Yeah, she wasn't. She didn't just not show up. Okay. So this is about tax collector. Oh. Oh, and I just had a few. Yeah. A few minutes. My ones. Took care of them. All right, excellent. So we're, by consensus, we're good with the minutes? Mm -hmm. All righty. Uh, any community input? Right, then department head business. Um, hi. How are you? I don't know. I've, I've heard some of your story, but my colleagues don't, so we'll just assume that none of us know. I, I spent some time with Thompson Energy this morning, um, trying to get a rundown on the cost of repairs and all that. So, of the compressor. Of, of the uh, compressor. Eight compressor. Yeah. One unit right now is, is totally down. Uh, it needs a compressor. Um, but it also, we, if they change the compressor, they need to change the air handling unit inside the building as well. 
It has uh, Freon 22 in there right now, <coughs> which has been banned as a 2020, no longer. Okay. Uh, so that's why they have to change change both units. So to replace that one unit, which actually does my office, the lieutenant's office, the sergeant's office, the evidence room, and the sec and the the lobby area, is eight thousand. Get the right piece of paper. Eight thousand four hundred eighty dollars. As of right now, we have uh, two outstanding repair bills with them, one eight sixty three twenty seven, one at one hundred ninety eight dollars, and then a service contract at one thousand seven hundred and fifty eight dollars for a grand total of eleven thousand two hundred and ninety nine dollars and twenty seven cents. There is a third repair bill for five hundred and twenty five dollars that's out there. However, they've told us that if we buy the condensed unit and install it, they won't charge us for that repair, the prior repairs on that unit. So I met the, briefly with the, the chair and Caroline this morning in trying to decide, you know, where we're going to <coughs> find this extra money that we didn't anticipate. So I went back and looked at my budget. And in the full-time uh, uh, full time of salary account, we have $254,448, uh, which represented a 3%, an overall 3% increase of last year. Not everyone got a 3% increase. Increase uh, this year, so there's actually a savings of eleven thousand one hundred and twenty-nine dollars um, uh, for the town in that line item alone. In my line, I've worked uh, four thousand nine hundred fifty-seven dollars in details as of yet that uh, is surplus in my line item. Okay. So I'm going to suggest, suggest to the board that uh, we make the necessary repair, we pay the repairs, and we get the service contract because we have no idea how long the remaining years are going to last, and um, then, then we're done with it, and that will come out of surplus, my surplus. Okay. In addition, the, uh, the issue with the generator, I'm going to recommend that uh, we also take that out of my surplus. So okay. it will save some issues on the town side. I know it's a little tight on my nurse side uh, and whatnot. So. What does the service contract the service contract is a, a, a yearly uh, checkup, light maintenance, and 15% off any parts when they come to repair it. So, so if we do but that, that a includes, compressor, if one of the other units? If, if one of the other units goes down, then yes, you'll, you'll need a compressor. And more than likely, if the, if the compressor's gone, you're going to have to change the air handling unit within the building as well. So every time we replace one of those units, I think we're looking at about $1,000. So. so here's here's what I found out that was so like you know just you know beat me over the head, hit me over the head something, is that you know these went in with the building renovation of 1999, mm -hmm. and you know compressors don't last forever. So here we are for almost 20 years later, and these things are going to start to go. Mm -hmm. So they they'll need to be, and again we have no building supervisor here. Mm -hmm. So you know this building has. You know, clearly, you know, things have been missed in the past, and we're continuing to miss some things. So I would encourage you to put these things on the CIP. Mm -hmm. So there are how many compressors in all? Uh, there are five altogether. So this replaces one of them. So it should be four. So four times nine is $36,000 for the compressors that remain, right? Say that dollar amount again. 36000 Each? Or no, no, that's total. the total for four. It's about 9000 apiece. We don't know when they're going to go, but, you know, they're not going to last forever. So, you know, Chief Ducharme, can I just say publicly how grateful I am for your going back downstairs and trying to figure this thing out? Because, obviously, this is, you know, another sort of kick in the gut. Sure. That, yeah. um, so, it's enormously helpful to us for you to have done what you've done, and I personally appreciate it. Sure. Time, so. Not a problem. And, you know, this is, you know, something else that, you know, we need to factor in, you know, when it comes time to discuss uh, March of 2019 and the police station on it. Um, you know, as, as we discuss this, we need to let the folks know that, you know, compressors can go to generator, you know, at some point. So. We've got the roof of the CIP, yeah. and, yeah. you know, it's so, not a cheap yeah. thing. And, right. and the whole siding issue is, I mean, the lack of insulation, the siding, which was tacked on to crap wood, crap wood I mean. <laughs> You know, the more you hear, the, 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 it's really discouraging. The whole thing is just completely discouraging. It's like, you know, we didn't have enough money, but let's do, let's do something anyway. 
which just, you know, these things flow downhill and eventually they come to the end of the hill. And I think we're at the end of the hill. So but it's not just the police station, it's the police administration building that we should be promoting because even if the police department leaves, you still have this issue with all of these equipment do, things absolutely that do. are failing. Absolutely. So you absolutely do. And now, and now you do it for what? How many hours a week? Right. right. And, and how does how that make people, sense? Yeah. How, exactly. How many people for how many hours a week and how does that make sense? Yeah. How much more are um, we looking at? I guess we're going to have a meeting with this yeah, next that, week. Yeah, that's not... That's but not you're adding how much more... You're still going to have to maintain a new building. So I don't... People seem to think you build a new building and everything just goes away. You still have to maintain it. So if you have an asset right. already that needs to be maintained. Right. So. so, but so, but Michael, what needs to happen? And I don't. What needs to happen is that you do a uh, an analysis. You do the maintenance on this building. Mm -hmm. You project maintenance on a new building. I understand. That. You know, so that you have to look at all the data. I fully concur. Mm -hmm. No one is saying there's not going to be there will be no maintenance on a new building. But a new building by <coughs> it's probably going to be more efficient, smaller, more compact, and there just continues to be, you know, problem after problem associated with, with here. So, but that we're not going to adjudicate that. That will come out with public hearings, and people can, of all stripes, can can put their. <coughs> what we have to do right now, obviously, is repair or replace this compressor. So, I assume you have purchase orders for us. I do, and I also have a, uh, a proposal that will need to be signed by by the board as well. And uh, they require a 50% uh, up, and then 50% upon completion. So I'm recommending to the board that we do all of the work that Townsend has recommended, the two repairs, but we have to pay for that, the annual service contract, and replace the ACC <coughs> compressor in a handler for a total of $1,299.27. Purchase order number 1412, Towns and Energy, for repairs to the uh, HVAC unit for $11,299.27. So, moved. And we, are we going to say that we're coming out of the, we're saying it's coming out of the police department's budget, right? Well, what I, so could you second that, please? Second, okay. okay. So, what I suggest is that this is town hall maintenance, so it needs to be accounted for in the town hall maintenance line, mm -hmm. and that we would move budget dollars. Gotcha. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Does that make sense? Yep. Okay, so that... So there's a true accounting of what it So there's a true accounting. Exactly. Yeah. Precisely right. Yeah. yeah. All right. Any, any other questions or comments? All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 So that's the purchase order. Then there's the contract. Yes. I see that they don't know what town we live in. <laughs> Rawlings. So this, um, so let's see what this says. So the so this is a contract for the above specific specification. So that's this proposal. So that would be this goes that, that's for the HVAC replacement unit. $8,400. Okay, so this is what they're going to do. So here you can, you can look at this if you want. And, and so how do we get to $11,000? You've got other... Yep, it's uh, we have our repair bill of $863.27, our repair bill of $198, and the service contract, which does include the furnace as well, it's not just the HVA system, is $1,758. Oh, I see. So that's here. All right, so all we're doing is signing a contract for this one piece of it. For the eight thousand yes. dollars. All right. So, uh, can I have have a motion, please, to sign the the uh, Center Energy proposal for contract proposal for eight thousand four hundred eighty dollars to replace the compressor. Did you? you That's the purchase order. That was the money. Now we have to sign the. Oh, just the contract. I'm motion to um, approve signing the contract for the purchase order. One four one two. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Alright, so. Alright, that's this expensive proposition. Does copies of these things come back up to town hall files as well? 
Yes. Thank you. Yes. Carolyn doesn't pay invoices unless there's a purchase. Okay. Well, I have the backup, though. Or the backup as well. So it's constant duty assigned. Yeah, she has a copy yeah, of everything, and, and yeah. I keep a copy of okay. anything that comes from me. Yep. So what I authorize are the, uh, they're sort of like what would be a blanket order in mm -hmm. other, under other circumstances, you know, utility bills, those kinds of things. Item number two, purchase order number 1407 to generate a connection for one level two system service for the diesel generator for $2,317.71. Purchase order 1407, Town Hall Maintenance, Level 2 System Service for a Diesel Generator for 2317.71. Second. All right, so discussion. So again, this is going to, it's, it'll be come out of Town Hall Maintenance, but we, you will be well, It will come out of my, my own. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. So, uh, any qu other questions or comments? All those in favor say aye. 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 So, we... You know, we'll take a look at this again, Mike. Mike, but this may allow us to think about the portico repair. I don't know now exactly where we stand, but there was this thing was sort of hanging over our heads. So we'll see. I don't, did you get? I don't. Did he you have continue? Me back, so. Okay, so we don't. We have no range. He said he had um, three or four different contractors. Did you get the purchase order number from the first one? Mm -hmm. You did? No. Okay, thank you. I didn't say it. Um, the, uh, the new Ford was delivered Thursday. Mm -hmm. August 1st, we'll send it down to uh, 2A, hoping that uh, it should be on the road probably by September, probably second week of September. Having said that, um, the city of Dover did look at both the um, 2010 Ford Explorer and the 2013 Taurus. The original plan was to get rid of the Taurus, but they looked at both vehicles and they evaluated both and they said we should get rid of the Ford Explorer, the 2010 Ford Explorer. The, uh, the, the um, Taurus is a, uh, a much better vehicle overall compared to the, the original. So the plan is to do that now, is to keep the sedan for another another rotation and get rid of the uh, the oldest really? the oldest uh, Explorer. Okay. Um, when they made that Explorer, that really wasn't a police vehicle; it was really a fleet vehicle. So it doesn't have a lot of the extra heavy duty stuff that the that the cruisers have. Um, so. so will we be selling? Will we be selling? We'll be getting rid of that, yes. Okay. And hopefully by the end of September, we'll have all striping off and ready to go out the bid right away. Okay. So I know we've read. I've already had inquiries, uh, a couple of inquiries on that already as to uh, when it was going up. So. All right, that's good. So <laughs> Maybe we'll have a big bidding war. Yeah, <laughs> all to our benefit should that really happen. Uh, true, true. Well, that's all that for you folks. Anything for me? No, thank you again for both the time that you invested in, in, in this project and yeah, no problem. for no uh, covering it. One sure. last thing. Did you contact T yet for the meeting for next week? Because I haven't seen a... I haven't seen a ton of roles that uh, you don't well from her yet. Huh? You mean for this uh, public for, hearing? For public I was meeting. going to do it tomorrow. Okay. Making sure she has that and post it in all the appropriate places. Okay. Yes. Good. I will really care of it. All right. Have a good All right. Thank you. Thank you. How many departments? spent through quarter two. There is uh, quite a bit left in that line, so yes, please. So it's a pre-made line so they can't just patch it. They've got to replace the whole thing. It's all rusted. Got to salt. Which which vehicle? The GMC. The 2008. So you've got 15000 for vehicle repair. 
and you've spent about 5,400 notes through June. <coughs> Inspected while it's there. It's going to be due for inspection in okay. September anyway. So, okay. Uh, there are five trees in the park across from the fire station that are. Not the cemetery, the park. The park. Okay. That are dead. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I don't know what your wishes are. We can take them down ourselves and haul that stuff off. But I just wanted to give you a heads up on that. Our. Is there any? Who's responsible? Is it the town? Yeah, the more, that's why our yeah, cemetery okay. of the park. Yeah, the park is ours. Yeah, there's, there's those evergreens that are all right. They have, they're all rotting. Yeah, they're rotting yeah. out. So, so we can do this ourselves. Okay. Yeah, Mike Smith, he, he, he does tree work. He, he okay. Climbing gear, but with the back ones that we can just make sure it falls the right way and just cut it right off. All right. So it. you're sure you can be all be safe and yep. do this? Not take the lime out. So, so board, I'm not hearing any objections to this. I, this I think it, probably the best thing to do is get them out of there before we okay. do have an issue. Yeah. Um, I don't know what your plans are on the transportation. I have not got the, the proposal yet for the electrical, so I'm. So gonna, we don't know. I'm going to require. I'm going to call a couple more companies to get this. To that would be helpful because that's so, that's a big yeah. unknown. So, we're talking about those things maybe later on okay. in this meeting. No. Uh, the um, other thing, George, that we did have, we were in non-public earlier, and we talked about some personnel related things, and, um, and we had uh, a discussion about how pleased we are with you, with the highway department, with the amount of money that you've saved, with your willingness to step up and do whatever needs to be done. Uh, what else did we say? And your creativity, I don't know if we put it this way, but your creativity in uh, tackling problems that you've been facing. Um, when we were approached uh, previously about just what well, hadn't even come up with, the trees in Morton Park, we were going to have to hire a tree service, and it's going to cost us a lot of money. So your willingness to uh, uh, be creative and uh, find a different solution is, is also it. much appreciated, I would say. And so. We know we hired you at the tail end of that range, and so the board, uh, I think, I will entertain a notion to uh, increase your salary by $1,000 effective July 31st or whatever the pay period is, from 52 Appreciate to that. 53. So, is there, do I have a I motion to do that? that? All right, I have a motion to do that. So, all right, any discussion or comments? All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you, George. Thank you. Now, we were expecting to hear this evening, right? <laughs> that was nice to come to a meeting and give him more money. Uh, we've been watching the COVID thing, and I think it's going to be good. Oh, with all that rain yesterday? We've been yeah. watching these last heavy rainstorms yeah. we had. Yeah. The water's flowing good. We will still dig it up and take care of the problem, make sure it's right. on top, and make yeah. the road shoulders safe. But we'll do that in August. We'll set a date and make sure everybody's online so I don't interfere with their farming issues. Mm -hmm. That's right, absolutely. So, uh, so this is to take out the rock, right? The, the, the yeah, we're gonna, I think we're going to pull that, old, that pipe out of there if we can. Open that COVID back the way it used to be and redo the top of it. So Robin Aikman, I was at a meeting with her last week, she is just so pleased with how all of this has transpired and is grateful for, um, you know, for what looks to be a solution that is not going to cost the town. Yeah, but you know, we're more positive way. we can... Yeah. You know what I mean? Once we dig into that, it's yeah. yeah. just a matter of putting a like, slab over the top of that section. I think we're going to be good. And we'll hang around for the other. Uh, if you want us to hang around for the transfer station stuff. We can, uh, we can get a hold. I don't know when it will come up. We've got, uh, we're expecting a conversation at 7 o'clock with somebody coming in uh, to talk about a possible building on a Class 6 road and then at 7.30 uh, Conservation Commission. So, I, I mean, you know. I don't know when it's going to come up. It's going to be a while. We, we, we've got we've got the costs, except for I just I collected five thousand dollars for electrical. And I, I don't know. I would think that it's going to be pretty close. So, but if it's a lot more, that I mean, we're at yeah. a point where yeah. you know five hundred dollars here, five hundred to get started. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. You, you know what I mean. Oh, definitely. <laughs> well, we're not going to be buying any big equipment.
which is we going to have some money available there. Well, right. so so that is, that is my question. You can help answer that. So, excuse me. If I look when I do look at the transfer station. Um, I do have to buy a window, and we got to replace a window. Oh, yeah. So does that come out of the? Yeah, that's the transfer station side. Right. So there's well, there's maintenance. So that would come out of maintenance, which is under government buildings. And so for that uh, uh, transfer station, for that there's two thousand dollars in the budget, and you've spent two hundred and eighty-seven. Okay. So that's that would be the shit. But other you know equipment and the, and the like. That would be under the transfer station section itself, which I'm trying to look for here. So you've got a line equipment maintenance and repairs. It is. So I'm just getting a minute here. Did I give you? Can I see the proposal? This? Yes. That. Yes. So you've got a 1750 and you've spent 939. Uh, can, we just, can we just get the bill for the, the, the $59 bill for that maintenance and okay. all the equipment uh, inspect uh, service? So that will, okay, so that will, it says maintenance contracts. So maybe I don't I don't really know. So we'll have to hold off on that. That, that will affect this proposal that I put together a little bit. So ignore what I just said. Uh, I don't know what I was thinking, but it's not jiving. So um, maybe maybe I thought there was might be money in in the highway department for repair and maintenance or equipment. So I'm I'm looking for twelve hundred dollars. If you so you've side. got in the highway department you've got equipment for we've got ten thousand and we've spent fifty two forty nine and the notes say trailer which you have already spent okay so so if you think you can find twelve hundred dollars from either transfer and or highway that I don't have to change my proposal. Okay. All right, thank you. So that so we'll we'll talk about it. We'll let you know. The other thing, George, is a um, couple of things. We've got an upcoming meeting with SRPC for the road surface management. Thirty first. Yeah. Stormwater meeting on Wednesday. I I can't go, but well, Caroline's going to go. So this is going to be a real nuts and bolts filling out the NOI. So I'm trying to think. You might want to talk to Caroline because I reviewed that whole thing with her today. We are, she's bringing the outfall map, and what we're going to get from, from the Stormwater Coalition is page two of that NOI, this is like this, this is what we have to do by 10-1, is the receiving waters. They're going to tell us what the receiving waters are, and they're looking for us to sort of map our outfalls. Well, in a rudimentary way, we have. It's on that map. Caroline has scanned it, you know, so that we've got it, you know, available to publish. Uh, I don't think it's on the website, but it, it it's in, it does exist. So, so you can talk to her, but I, I'm not sure. Talk, talk to her. <coughs> I'm just not sure that this is the one that you need to go to oh, necessarily. Right. Yeah, I'm sure it's you can. Yeah, do. exactly. So, um, that's right. that's my suggestion. But the other the other meeting coming up, it's not set, and I need to talk to the board about who's going to represent the board. Is the one with John Storer, who's the uh, head of community services in Dover. And this is about Oak Street and how we're going to maintain Oak Street. So, you know, I thought that he was going to set this up before I went on vacation. It didn't happen. And then I thought it would be right away when I came back and it didn't happen. And now I'm not going to be here. So it just seems feasible that, unless the board has another idea, that a board member be there. Uh, because we're talking not just what's going to happen. You know who's responsible, what percent, what this and that, and you know highway money, and you've been getting all over high. So, so, so I think it'll be you and a board member, and the board will decide later on tonight. I think who, who what name I send along to to Dover so they can arrange a meeting. And I think that's 
That's
had uh, grandma there for a while and so forth. And uh, we do like to do that along with doing a lot line adjustment between those two lots just to uh, better provide a better uh, building area on lot number one uh, for the construction of that um, ranch. Uh, and basically what they propose to do is a, an even swap of land, about 9,400 square feet, shown as lots of uh, areas A and B here. Um, so right now, uh, lot number two comes all the way back down towards this stone wall, cuts straight across there, and then lot number one is back in here like this. Mm -hmm. Basically, we would just do a swap here, uh, thereby creating a lot uh, number one, which is shown as 7-3 in the tax maps, um, as this J-shape or L-shape lot, and then uh, lot number two, shown as 7-4 on the tax maps, would just have this um, uh, appendage at the rear. Um, now, the, I'm going to show you a different plan here, which is basically the same plan, but with uh, slopes uh, over 25% better identified in shading. Okay? So you can see here um, on lot number one, uh, it's got some slopes on it, which would actually need a conditional use of permit from the planning board to build upon and uh, would need conservation commission endorsement and so on and so forth. And lot one also does have uh, some wetlands at the rear of it, none of which are near, going to be near, even not close to for impacts, but I want to show them anyways. Uh, Bill's lot, <coughs> lot number two, um, does have some steep slopes shown in shading as well um, down beyond uh, his septic system leach field, which I'm sure were created at the time um, as part of the 3-in-1 slopes associated with it with a septic system. But the 3-in-1 slopes being a 33% qualify as conservation area, um, again, protected under the Rollinsford zoning ordinance. So again, doing this, this swap provides for a, a much nicer building envelope up here um, in which uh, there would be no impact to uh, steep slope areas. Uh, so we need to take that up with the planning board and as Denise knows we were already in front of the planning board discussing this. We also need to take this matter up with the zoning board of adjustment uh, hopefully as soon as possible for two things. One, we need to uh, uh, acquire an equitable waiver of dimensions for Phil's house evidently um, what we have found out as a result of our recent survey in the fall of last year is that Phil's house is just a whisker too close to uh, uh, Bear Road. Uh, instead of being 50 feet, I think his garage is about a foot or two too close. And the house dwelling portion is a little bit too close to Fresh Creek Road. So uh, we've asked for uh, equitable waiver, waiver relief there. And then secondly, we would need to get the zoning board's uh, relief with a variance to allow this lot line adjustment to happen because not back in 1980, but now, uh, minimum lot size, two acres in this zone, is defined as net area. That is, plot area exclusive of steep slopes, wetlands, easements, right of ways, that type of thing. And even from the get-go in 1980, uh, this wouldn't have qualified, um, but now uh, because we were we would be seeking to do this swap here, part of area A does contain about half of it contains steep slopes, and uh, it, it wouldn't be it would be an even swap from a gross area standpoint, but it would not be an even swap from a net area standpoint. Uh, so as such, we would need uh, zoning relief so there. Creating a non-conforming lot. They're both not conforming. Mm -hmm. um, we would be making one uh, a little bit more not conforming, right. and the one on which we which want to build less not conforming. Mm -hmm. yeah. How long is this distance? Because uh, here, good to question. The, to the new, where that when you're proposing the new? Yep. So. Um, roughly uh, uh, about 300 feet from Bear Road to the uh, 
uh, new lot line. Okay. What are our guidelines then? Do you, does it do you remember? It's 600. I brought it under. Under. Depending on the conditions. Article four in your guidelines that were promulgated sometime last year. Uh, and what we're proposing to do is improvements to uh, Fresh Creek Road for about 480 feet. And that would um, include uh, about 180 feet across the frontage of the resultant new lot one, and also provide for um, an emergency vehicle turnaround in a, in a hammerhead or T fashion into the proposed driveway uh, for Phil's lot. And that could be done by um, easement, by license, permission, that type of thing, whatever board, the boards deem to be most, most uh, reasonable. Can I ask a question? Sure. Okay. Yeah. You said you were making one lot less of a um, non-conforming non and the other one more. Yes, that's correct. If the one that's more, is that the one that he currently owns and lives on? And how does that affect the sale? Is that, if it's going to go up for sale? Um, it wouldn't affect the sale at all, as long as the, the Zoning Board of Adjustment approved the variance request. Oh, okay, so it makes it non-conforming, but it does zoning approves it, then it's, it, it would be okay. The planning board cannot create a non-conforming law. It is not allowed in this town. So you'd have to get a waiver from the zoning board. Through the zoning board. Okay. So even his 125 bear road lot right now mm -hmm. is not conforming. Oh, as it is. As, as it, it is. is. Exactly. But you're making that one Just a little bit more in order to work and non-conforming. Okay. In a net sense, yep. in a gross sense, it conforms to the two-acre requirement. Okay. But net, it's got a little bit more steep slopes. Okay. Um, but vice versa on lot number one, seven dash three. Okay. So we have we have got a little bit of a work to do. A little bit of work to do, and we also have um, uh, might as well talk about it right now uh, about the uh, maybe it's just a slight conflict between the 1980 approved plan and last year's. Guidelines for construction on class selectmen's guidelines for the uh, regarding construction on class six roads. Now, basically, and they, they aren't guidelines. They're just to help a board try to sort out how it might think about something like right. this. Basically, and, and I think if, if I can uh, summarize very concisely, the the intent of the guidelines is to um, not put out any more roadway in the town that the town will be responsible for uh, maintaining and, and actually keeping the, the look of the road as much as it can be consistent with what it is today, a gravel road. The notes on the 1980 plan say, uh, number one, uh, the gates and bars would have to be moved, um, which is something that would have to be done in town meeting. And number two, that the road would have to be brought up to acceptable town standards. In this instance, acceptable town standards, pursuant to the subdivision regulations, would mean 18-foot width of pavement, 2-foot gravel shoulders either side, and a full structure underneath the road. Now, we can certainly do that and go that route in accordance with the conditions of the 1980 plan. However, if the select board and, and the planning board were to be agreeable to it to keep more consistent with last year's selectmen's guidelines, we could do the 16-foot wide gravel with, I think it's with two-foot wide shoulders um, on it, and no pavement, and ultimately that would have to be affected by the planning board to agree to modify the conditions of approval in 1980, which is doable. That's a doable thing, that, that, as long as the planning board votes do that. So, so uh, Phil, you said you bought this land. Well, so, where was it apart? What was it attached to then? I mean, who's subject? Who would? If this was, where you bought this whole thing? No, 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 no. 1985, you bought the pink part. Okay. So, where, who? Mrs. Mr. Marston owns it for the last 30 years. He just bought it. I just bought it last year. Oh, it okay. Cheap, so it was a subdivision off of, off of 
subdivision was how, was how, simultaneous. With all the rest I of think those I got it now. 1980. Got it. All those it. lots were approved. Got it. Well, she she's been paying taxes as a house lot since then. Ever since, since last year. She really? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's interesting. So, so I'll just you know, and board, feel free to just kind of pipe in, but uh, chime in. So our our, I don't know if, you know, we got the guidelines from another town. Yeah. And we thought about. You know, the, near the railroad there, Scotland Road, and that particular Scotland yes. Road, that particular model with yeah. Ray Vermet, and and that particular model, you know, is it keeps the road gravel. We don't maintain it. He maintains it. It's a long way. I don't know if if it's it's probably more than 600 feet that we're talking about. But in any event, <coughs> um, you, you know the, the the issue. One of the issues that we talked about with regard to how far in we would allow something like that is the issue of safety and making sure that our emergency vehicles have access to to any house that's there, and with the ability that we don't want to endanger them, with the ability to turn around as necessary and and, and come back out. That was one of the things. So, uh, you know, keeping the rural flavor, I think, is. Right, but we also came up, these guidelines came about because we had an applicant who wanted to build on a class A and the town um, subdivision regulations, the site plan says, specifically says we don't allow building on class 6 roads. So you still have that problem, in my mind. We don't allow building on class 6 roads unless you get a waiver. Um, there's a slight nuance of a difference there. Article 9.15 of the subdivision regulations say that there won't be any subdivision on Class 6 highway. Well, I'm telling you, Paul, that I'm not signing a building permit. There's only going to be two members of the board in another two weeks. I'm not signing a building permit on a Class 6 road for anybody unless it's approved, unless a waiver is granted by the zoning board. I'm just letting you know that right now. So you don't want to waste any more of your time. I'm not signing one. There's only two, we're going to be two members of the select board. So, but town made a decision we didn't want building on class six roads. So if you can get a waiver for that, then fine. Then I'll sign off on it. But until then, I don't want to waste anyone else's time. And there was a number of conditions. I wasn't at that meeting. I, I couldn't make it. But there's like there's several waivers you're going to need to get, right? What are we talking about now? For, the, for There's all sorts of different conditional use waivers you're going to need to get before you even get close to getting a building permit, too, right? Oh, well, you mean on Rollins Road? Here. Here. Yes, Tom. When we're talking about, when you mentioned the variance, uh, Section 5.4 says that you need a variant. I mean, you won't allow any lot line adjustments on non-conforming lots unless it makes it conforming. So, but you already asked about the ZBA, so... Yes. Yeah, so yeah, we, we realize we need to go yeah. to the ZBA yeah. to uh, effectuate a lot line adjustment right. with the planning board. Right. Yeah, I think that's, I think the other thing um, Paul mentioned that related to Rollins Road was the attorney's opinion about um, the variance because that lot was going to be accessed from Rollins Road, not the Class 6 road. Right, and they threw that plan out. They got yeah. over the yeah. other plans. Yeah. Now you just said something before about they actually sent a formal plan. Yes. yes. Right, yeah, yeah. So, I'm going to memorialize that. so, so that, just, if you excuse me just a minute, so, so that's the route that that, Particular right. person is go he's going through as well. Can I go through a different? Well, he's going through. No, no, because we're not talking about that application. We're talking about this. One. I'm not even going to get involved with yeah. that one right now. What I'm saying is we don't allow building on Class Six roads. We made that policy, right? As a town, the planning board has that policy. So if you get a waiver from that, then I think you come back and talk to us. But until then, we're in the same situation, the same problem. We ended up on the shady lane. We should have just said that from the very beginning. So we had to learn the hard way on that one. Let's let's back up for a second. First of all, you said something about in two weeks. In two weeks, Suzanne won't be sitting here anymore. Resigned. She's resigned. Board. Oh, okay. So you're so. going to have to get you get a decision from two board members until okay. we can find a replacement. And I'm not signing off on anything because I, I until all of it gets squared away between the zoning board and the planning board. And still, I think you have to go to town meeting and have them remove that. If you want to live by the letter of this 1980 subdivision, you've got to get the gates and bars removed from town meeting or pushed or pushed back or pushed back or modified by the planning board. Now, we 
have been in contact as of the middle of May, <coughs> I'm sorry, middle of June, uh, with um, both Caroline and Sarah, uh, Caroline Kendall and Sarah, with regard to getting on the Zoning Board of Adjustment um, agenda uh, to address this very thing, the, the, the mm -hmm. equitable waiver and the variance, the non-conforming aspect. Uh, most recent email correspondence that I had from um, Caroline was that we needed to come here first. Um, so um, I was right, well, and you did, and you, you just heard what you needed to hear. Until you get all your ducks in a row, you're not going to get a building permit, and you still may not, and to, unless. Uh, the select board does not have to issue a building permit on a Class 6 road. We've been through this. We don't have to even give a reason. We, we can, can just say no if we don't want to build on a Class 6 road. So the town has said, we don't want to build on a Class 6 road. So if you can get all of those hoops jumped through, all those I's dotted and T's crossed, then we might consider issuing a building permit. But until then, I wouldn't even... So you're saying if, if I build this to a Class 5 road... You can't make it a class five. No, 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 but I mean, if I get the town to prove that I could build it. The, the law in 1980 was approved as a host law. There has to be access to it somehow. Because it was approved as a host law. So if I have to build it as a class five road to, to get access to it, that's fine. Well, even that, but that is a board level. Right. Action. It may but have I mean, actually also have to, have, have to go to town. That may have to go to town right. meeting as well. But I mean, if that's what I need to do, it's that's right. possibly so. Just have so. to build a road to get to it. Yeah. But then we're going to be coming to the town and saying, "Now you're going to have to be tamed right. because it's classified the road." Mm -hmm. but this this is not subdivision here. It's a lot line adjustment. I understand. That. So section nine fifteen doesn't apply. The town has said for decades, we do not want building on Class 6 roads. Right. But with that said, Mike, we, we issued these guidelines because there was a proposal pushed through that we didn't have any guidance on, on Shady Lane. And I don't think we still feel really comfortable about how any of that transpired. That's why those, those guidelines were brought about. Not because we want to encourage building on Class 6 roads. It's only if it's presented to us, right? Am I yes, if someone gets a, if someone gets a, Goes through all, all the hoops that come before planning, planning board, and whatever sequence is supposed to happen, come back and to come here. to us. And we still we keep, we're, we're not going to issue a we're not going to issue a ruling on something that we can't see. Right. So that's that's the that's the conundrum that we get placed in. Right. Because we can't say, look, yes, we will when we don't. All right. these things have to happen before, and then right. and then and then that that will guide us. But they're just a guide. We wrote, we adopted them last year. It, they're guidelines. They don't say the board has to accept right. them. So it's not a policy. Right. It's, it's not a regulation. It's, right. It's not an ordinance. It's a guideline. And and certainly we we came here tonight at the uh, basically the direction of Caroline saying that the board would like to speak with us. So that, you know, as a courtesy, we wanted to come to this board and, and speak with you, not ignore that, and then um, go to the zoning board and then the planning board. I think didn't Caroline just relay the decision that the planning board made at the consultation meeting. I thought they suggested you come to the select board. Caroline was just That's reminding me of it. Wasn't that? Did that the planning board talking. suggest? Yeah. Oh, you weren't there. I wasn't there, but that's what I, I think, yeah, I was think, told. I, yeah. Yeah, I, 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 so I like we're not compelling you to come here, the planning board was. But, and, right. and we're sorry if there was a misunderstanding. It is true that the wheels of government often go kerklunk. Right. I'm sorry, say that again. The wheels of government often go kerklunk. What? <laughs> That's possible, I guess. This is our email. Let's plan it Monday the 23rd for 7 for you to address the select board about the proposed Fresh Creek Road project. We understood, I understood it was at your request, and so of course we want to talk to. Right, because it was asked right. by the planning board. That, I guess that part I wasn't from, I wasn't yeah. completely aware it, of. And maybe our request was vague. 
But no, no, she does say, this is from Sarah. Um, on July 11th. Uh, sorry for the delay in getting back to you. I wanted to be sure I got accurate information before getting back to you. As the planning board advised, yes, uh, you to go to and speak to the select board before proceeding, the consensus is that you need to do that before going any further with any other applications. Caroline Kendall has requested that you let her know what money you would plan to attend so that she can arrange for Tom Clark to be in attendance. Right, I think there, there are any other outstanding issues on this property that Mr. Clark may be aware of. That's what the applicant needs to be aware of that now. Because if there's no point of going forward, we right. should talk about it now. Right. That's why it's here. Yes, and to answer any issue, I mean, I wrote a couple of opinions based on your uh, topic for discussion. But I think we've covered them all. But the, the, the key is, I think, at the end of everything, the select board still has to vote to approve the building permit on a Class 6 road. And certainly, I mean, they're not going to make a decision now, but everyone has to be on notice of all the T's that need to be crossed, the I's, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then, presuming that we get our zoning approvals, zoning board approvals, our planning board approval for a lot of adjustment, we get back in front of this board by Ms. Suzanne, a building permit forthcoming is not a given. Correct. Okay. Well, and I don't think that was clear with the last applicant on a Class 6 road as many times as we said it. Okay. So I want to make sure that we're all on the same page. Wait a minute. Can, can you repeat that? He's saying he's getting all approvals from all of the boards. Why would we not do that? The select board right? doesn't have to issue a, uh, this is a state Even though the zoning and the planning board Correct. says we... If I may, there's an RSA that speaks to that. Um, state RSA it gives you authority to the select board regardless whether or not they want to issue a permit on uh, regardless of other approvals. It, it feels like a catch-22. It does. It, it, it certainly does. does. I think it is a catch-22. Yeah. But the, the other side of the coin is, is we, we were visited by uh, the other situation and sort of asked to say what we would do. You know, get and and that we can't do that either. You know, because it all depends on all of those steps that, that come into play. We can't make a decision until we know what it is that we're making a decision on. So it, it's one of these, it is kerklunky. Uh, you know, I feel, I, you know, it just is. I'm sorry for that, but... That's the way it is. Any other comments, questions? Tom, is there anything else that you... I'm, I'm, I'm good as long as we're all on the same, on the same page. We're on notice. Basically, a trip to Foxwoods. <laughs> Throw the dice, see what turns up. I see, yes. Could be snake eyes, could be hard eights. You know, I mean, clearly the guidelines say that the board is going to be amenable to looking at something, but we can't say that what that board's going to do. No guarantees. No guarantees. Yeah. Okay. Because if the fire chief comes in and tells us there's absolutely no safe way yeah. to get a fire vehicle down that road, yeah. regardless, can the, a, a, any select board in good conscience say, yes, we're going to issue a building permit? Right. You can't ignore I mean, your right. I mean, that, that's why I say that. That's so why I say you yeah. 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 But I think Mr. Kennison deserves to hear that because it's a heck of a lot of money you may or may not be putting out. So, yeah. that, And I don't think that was clear the last time around. So It should have been, but anyway. Thank you. Sorry to hear you. You're stepping down. Thank you. I'm tired. Tired's okay. Is there a, 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 a an appointment um, to be made, or is that to be? That, that's the for the board, the remaining board to, to determine. I see. I have no say in that. Yeah. So, which makes sense. Want to throw your hat to the ring? <laughs> he doesn't live here anymore. He's vacated the premises. Oh, that's right. You do have to live in town. You don't have to live in town. Phil still lives in town. Yeah. Yeah. You're out of luck on that one. All right. Thank you very much. Nice to see you both. It's not for me. It's not for me. Yeah. What's that? Yes, it is.
Yeah. yeah. That's right. He lives on Bear Road now. Yeah. Is he, he does his property about about the property uh, abut the? He does. Yeah. Right. Actually, about it or is it just? No, it's right, 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 right about here. Oh, really? Yeah. 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 Interesting. You noticed that at the Thanks for coming. Hey, you want to do it? Yes. All right. Sorry for any confusion. I mean, it is a confusing process. Well, I think the minutes will reflect uh, that there's no confusion this time. I hope so. And I don't think it was on your part. Well, I hope the applicant was very confused every time you came out. Is there anything you want us to keep? Um, you're going to take everything back? What, what I handed to you, you're, you're um, welcome to keep. Right. Um, these will come through the zoning board and the uh, planning board. Okay. So they get to this part of this. I think that goes in. What is the, that's the same that we handed over um, oh. the night of the planning board. Okay. I, think the, I thought I gave one to you. I did the, uh, I got that those plans. I didn't get that. Okay. Thanks. Thank There is something while we yes. have it over here. Go right ahead, sir. Talk about peanuts. Are you filming tonight? Oh, yeah. oh peanuts. Yes. I'm washing the street. Yeah, the so town is on that. I couldn't see any peanuts. Where exactly are they? It was in no, the back of Christina Hill. Hill. Mine's different than that. She lives on oh, Pleasant. She lives on Pleasant. Yeah. But the house is on Washington. Like four, uh, eleven, four. So she's also Celia on Celia. So Celia has uh, yeah. may be able to oh. better direct you. She knows. Do you know Celia uh, Leopold? Where? Um, I believe it is four eighteen. It's the white three story building. That's excellent. Thank it's you. on the right hand side. They're all along. If you're going Every down the road, the it's on the almost two years. Yeah. Thank you very much. You're I welcome. Thought it was four. Take care. Seven. 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 Okay, all right. So I'm those are the folks that are distributing the peanuts. That's, yeah. I was looking for an area that right. seemed to be, if you go to Mrs. Hill's house, she's on Pleasant. Pleasant, I don't think we're on the next one, Pleasant yeah. Street. Yeah. She's the big yellow house uh, on the right hand side. Right. I'm sure she would have no problem if you go in the back area oh. and look at it. Well, she said she had also, when she was here, that they had hours of cleaning it up. Yeah, they had well, cleaned a lot not, of it up, too. You know, they were oh. cleaning it up quite a bit, but you could still see it on the other property around her as well. Yeah. And they have peanut allergies associated yeah. with the family, I guess. So I'll, I'll go back and check it out again. But you can see there's a feeder you can see from her backyard. Yeah, the they, they've that installed they've, a feeding they've installed trough, a big trough on the... Not the hills, but the... No, the, like the, the people who are yeah. feeding the squirrels or chipmunks or whatever. So, and I don't know whether you could can approach this as a health thing, but you or I think that's housing or the issue. But see how it, yeah, see so what the extent is, it. and whether it rises. <coughs> in, okay. in, in the housing ordinance, is the section on 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 encouraging rodents and other things, right. pests right. like that. So I don't know that can be used, but that pretty much I, I believe refers to the building, not necessarily a backyard. Well, there was something about garbage or something like you're leaving garbage out. So I don't yeah. know, all was, that garbage. I don't know. And there was also. Bringing in rats too, didn't you say? Yeah, there was some yeah, talk of so. some just sighting, just that, rat sightings. Yeah, that so. would make a difference. Yeah. So, that's what she was, so she was definitely really concerned about I'll, the children. I'll, yeah, I'm going to yeah. check it out. I think there's anything else. Mm -hmm. No, she, we saw pictures. I mean, she has them on her phone for sure. That she yeah, I would, you um, know, if you wanted to give her a call, I'm yeah. sure that Caroline could help locate yeah. a phone number for her. Yeah. And she'd be happy to show you pictures and show you her yard, I'm sure. Okay. Was it her kids that were No, I, I don't think it was. Family. 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 I do. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have brought that up. And I was like, you said you did. Yeah. So there are peanut allergies of children in the neighborhood yeah. that these are now being distributed into their yards. Good so point. Yeah. It was one thing to put out bird seed or something, like, yeah. you know, sunflower seeds, but there may be allergies to that, I just yeah. have to say. But. I know there's definitely allergies of people, so I'll definitely follow up. All right, thank you. Is there anything else for Tom? No, thank you. Thank you very much for being here. You're welcome. welcome. Always a pleasure. Tamara, come on up. Thank you, Mel. Oh, yes, yes, it was late. We just got, we kind of read this. So if you could just point out to us. Well, I see Mel put like an update or basically the past, but I wanted you to see the draft of the minutes too, so that you can see what was captured officially. And the two things that I want to go into a little bit are not in the minutes as much as 
they're, they're kind of like issues that came out after the meeting. So I want to talk about Well, why don't you there. just talk to us about what you want to talk okay, about? Okay, so all that stuff happened. Like, no. I don't know what all that stuff now is. Now I'm the chair, Linda's the treasurer. <laughs> yes, we need to figure awesome out talk. how we're going to do awesome the money talk. because we still don't have that resolved with Burn. Um, so we need to figure out how we're going to handle having our monthly treasurer's report communicated to the treasurer. And if we were to vote to disperse money as a commission, how we would do that since we have, do have the authority to divert, disperse money from that account. That's unresolved. Um, Caroline told me earlier today that she has not been able to reach anybody at the state to get any more information about that. So I would like to have that resolved, you know, ideally by the time we next meet, which is September. Okay. So <coughs> are you thinking that we, we'd be better, we're, we're in a better position to get an answer from the state? Well, I think you're in a better position to have a conversation with Vern. So he's not including the conservation account on his monthly uh, charge? I thought he told us that he wouldn't have anything to do with it. But the last I heard was Vern said, I won't have anything to do with managing that account. He didn't say that to us. So who has the... Um, the control of those checkbook or savings account. Who has control so of that So the last right time now? I was here, what we discussed <coughs> at the meeting, in your meeting, was that we believe as a commission it best that the checkbook and everything be held here. Right. Because there's so much turnover and potential change. And we asked, is it within the purview of the town treasurer to, you know, hold responsibility to disperse a check through the treasurer of the Conservation Commission's request on behalf of the group voting for whatever they wanted to disperse money for. We all agreed that that was acceptable. Then the next thing I heard was that Byrne wouldn't do that. So that's the last that I have on that conversation. Well, the checkbook is physically here, though, right? Yeah, right. I think so. It's in the same. Yeah. So yeah. here I have, I'm looking at the May 2018 treasurer, treasurer's report. And so under other accounts, there's Hydro Reserve, and there's Conservation, which has only eight hundred and twenty-five dollars. So that's so there's two accounts. Right. There's an eight hundred and twenty thousand, eight. I'm sorry, eight hundred twenty dollar, and about a thirty-eight thousand dollar balance in another account, which came from the forcing of the property. Right. So he's not even listing that one on this treasurer. Just the eight hundred dollar one. So one is the savings and one is the checking. As far as I know, I was the treasurer until this previous meeting last yeah. week. But I never had I never had access to anything. I have never seen any of it. I've never seen a bank statement. I've never seen any information from any of the accounts. And now Linda McGivern has been voted to be the treasurer, and we'd like to come up with a you process. know a process by which we have the ability to report to the commission every month what so the status the of the bank accounts. The statements must go somewhere. No, because if you sign up, there are no statements. They just don't send them. Do you, you have get to, electronically, maybe. Do you happen to know if it's a Citizens Bank account? I would guess. I think it is. And the previous treasurer was Mark Kucher, as far as I remember. So, um, so you're so we need to have a process whereby. We need the same sort of a similar process by which we draw down. I mean, you want to, you don't physically have the checking, the checkbook. So you would want somebody to write the check for you on your. Ideally, if it's if it's a digital bank statement, couldn't the treasurer of our board have access to the digital bank statement? Yeah, but I can't, can't do a withdrawal from it because he's not on the account, right? It's she in this case, but. Which treasurer are we talking about? Linda McGivern. Are you talking about Linda? The newly voted as of last Tuesday treasurer of the Conservation Commission. So I think first of all we need to look to see where the accounts are held. They they're here in this. Oh, they're in the like citizens. Yeah, yeah. No, I understand. I'm sure they're citizens. Citizens. I'm sure if everything's at citizens, they're at citizens. I'm sure. Maybe. But it's it, is it all <laughs> about just getting a citizen, um, signature card and yes. and having Linda sign it and uh, it needs to be a second citizen. Um, Signature from somebody's conservation. Chair and the, con and the treasurer, typically. Yeah. Things, but. And have, and just do that and have control of I, it? You, I have no idea. I've never so you know, had this statute. responsibility, so that's why I'm here asking you about it. So we should it, research the statute. We should do it. 
the, 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 the statute that created so Mike the, will do created some conservation stuff. commissions in general. It's got to be spelled out there how money is dispersed, and if it isn't, then the, the um, charitable, not charitable trust, the Probably. trust division of the Attorney General's office is supposed to be able to isn't help that, us. Isn't that of course, that's Terry right. Knowles is right. so retired, I and I don't know if she's been replaced. Well, the municipal association they could help too. Is, yeah. is going to take over her, at least oh, the training. Oh, that's right, that's right, yeah, the training part, yeah. So. Well, we could ask the municipal association to send him an email. Yes, so are you going to be doing that? I'll do it, yeah. So Mike will do some research. I won't Great. be here. Perfect. No. Not perfect, you won't be here, but perfect. No, no, I understand. It. I understand. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Yes. And then should we have that be part of the treasurer's report of showing that all of the funds? Because it is kind of deceiving to, to only say that 800 and something dollars or whatever it well, is. Well, it's odd. Yes, yeah, so if there's one should, conservation, why are there be, two conservations? Either that's that's right. 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 Why are there together? Two and ultimately, at the end of the day, the rules that apply to the ability of the Conservation Commission to disperse funds and for that to roll over every year are well within the, the regs. Mm -hmm. But it is town money at the end of the day. Yes. And of course it should be part of whatever reporting is happening. Yes. And I don't want that commission or anybody who's a, so I, I wouldn't agree to be the treasurer if I knew this was going to drive on forever and I don't expect Linda to either because mm -hmm. it's too shady and sketchy right. to not know officially what it, sh what it is. Right. <clears throat> Do you have any current urgency with regard to meeting? We're not meeting months? until September 18th. Okay. So, so we'll that's get an answer by then. Answer. I think that's plenty of time to sort it Absolutely. out. All right. And I've never had a checkbook or a balance, so I don't even have any idea. I've never I seen the checkbook. I don't even know what it I, looks like. So I thought someone said it was in the safe here. In the yeah, yeah I think it physically is here. Yeah, but I yes. It. But that doesn't answer Tamara's question. Right. So right. we need to. But also, when you're saying it's town funds, so it's town funds that only stays with conservation. It can't mm -hmm. be used for any other purpose, correct? Correct. But like right. we have special right. revenue funds, like the hydro fund, which right. we, it's there, but we can't spend it unless we get authorized by a town meeting. So if this is Conservation Commission, we can't spend it, but they can under whatever whatever whatever, whatever it is that you guidelines that they have to follow. Um, okay. I'll email them and ask them. So. Okay. Correct. Yes. Okay. So issue number two. Yes. Um the um Linda McGivern also is a board member of the Southeast Land Trust, yes. which is the conservation group that holds the easement on the scout land. And one of the things we discussed at our last meeting, we had really good meeting this last meeting was improving communication to <coughs> the board and the town with regard to management of that easement because there was an issue over the last few months of somebody giving permission to a commercial group to use a piece of the property for a commercial, a commercial activity which is not allowed under the easement and SELT found out about it and they were concerned about the the age and the purview of our easement and said, you know, it probably should be reviewed and we should look at potentially revising it. The issue I took away from the conversation was somebody's giving permission to use that property and it's not you and it wasn't the Conservation Commission. Yes, it was. It was the select board. We let the select board have their rights to that. Did they come to you for permission? The, yeah. the, that group? Yes. Okay. I did the, not the, know that. The extreme race that happened in April? Yes. Yes, yeah. they did come to us. Okay. And we found out after the fact, because Sunny Vermette came to see us, that, oh, by the way, they tacked things up on my tree, they, mm -hmm. they crossed our property, and so we have noted that so that if they... Okay. I did not know they came to you, they, and at the meeting, everybody w was unclear about where they came from. My concern was that the ATV club gave their permission because they were also using other property that the ATV club maintains and that they took it upon themselves to give the group permission. So if they came to you officially, then that's fine. The real issue is not everything they put up in the woods, which is also not great, but it's that they're a commercial, they were doing, they're a, they were advertising, they were collecting money, they were doing things that were of a commercial nature. I see. And SELT does not, that is not within the purview of our easement. Uh -huh. our easement. So, but, so then... How does that get communicated so we know we should write something so like that? What we want to do as a conservation commission is have better communication with you. Perfect. And ideally, when groups come to you, they should come to us yeah. to run so, it. Run so the issue it. then with that race was that because it was a 
we couldn't get permission because, after all, they were making money. It was a for-profit kind of a situation. We had no authority to allow a for-profit to use exactly. scalp land. That was the issue. Exactly. We're thinking of it as a safety. We talked to Ducharme. You know, yeah. we were thinking of that sort of thing. And so what has come out of it, which I think is actually a really good thing, is that the Southeast Land Trust has been going through some of their older easements, which are the count. It is, I, I actually helped Dan Markey. We wrote it together mm -hmm. in 2005, 2006. It's a little outdated. So we're going to upgrade that with the recommendation and advisement of SELT to make it more current. Mm -hmm. And that could potentially bring to the town a discussion again about allowed use mm -hmm. and what people can do out there. Yep. So yeah, SELT cool. holds the, sorry, SELT holds for the entire tract of Scotland or a piece of it? SELT is the conservation organization that holds our easement, which means they are empowered legally to manage the use of the land for us. Interesting, because the town purchased that land. It belongs to the, the land always belongs to us. But when you put in the conservation easement, there's an outside objective third party that manages. The town decides what the easement will say, but then we hire somebody outside of the town right. to manage it, to keep it what it's so, right. So Tamara, when, when, um, when, so SELT will uh, will prepare. A, a, so so it's going to go through legal. Yeah. What yeah. What, what is the process? It will go through legal, and it will go through kind of a comp process, where they look at other properties yes. that are the size of ours, and they'll come back with recommendations, and they'll say, you know, typically that's not a great. It's only 100 acres. It's not a very big. It's not property. huge. Right. I'll let you know right up front. There are no other easements at SELT hold that allow ATV use. So that's going to come back into discussion. There'll be other things about properties that size that will come into the discussion as well. The Conservation Commission will work on, based on those recommendations, yeah. how we'd want to revise it. It would go to town meeting. The town would then so devote. It goes to town meeting. So of the course town, it does. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I just didn't know how, what, what the process right. Now, the legal fees, would that come out of your, your the conservation? I don't, I'll have to follow up on that and see what kind of expense it is, but I think it might actually be part of them holding the easement. So it's a, it's like, a review of what we okay. have. Because yeah. if there were any kind of a significant expense right. associated. But the, the key thing that I want to do is how do we set yes. up a protocol by which we do permission and get that into like some kind of rule or guideline or whatever so that going forward when none of us are doing this anymore, there's like a procedure yes. in place when people yes. want to ask permission to use that property. Right. And I do think it should go in front of the Conservation Commission and then to you for final approval, since you hold liability and responsibility for the property. Yeah, we also will But we would be able to interpret the the use and the... the yeah, sort of like the planning board. The planning, exactly. the, the planning board, you know, anything commercial goes to the planning board, and, and, you know, we can't make those determinations ourselves. So this would be another instance of something that goes somewhere else first, and then comes exactly. here. So... Um, and perhaps on the website it would be, like, these are your steps, right? Mm -hmm. So if you want to use the Scotland, you go to the Conservation Commission first, upon yeah, their so, approval, you yes. support Scotland. So once we that so way, if they come to us and it's definitely not included in the easement, we can just say no, and they don't have to waste any more of anybody's right. time. Right. So if we get an endorsement saying that you guys approved this, then we exactly. give it the final blessing, yeah. and that's that. Yeah, yeah. then we still yeah. have to ask our questions about safety yeah. and when. Right. And right. And, you know, but at least we know that they've already been exactly. reviewed. Yeah. Yeah, so that's a good idea. So the writing something to, to post on our website, is that something the conservation I can, I can do that for you. Like the steps? Yes. yes. Yeah. It would be superb. Just email me. Yeah, I'm yes, I'd, I'd be happy you. to do that. Because I don't have anything to write. No. Yes, I know, and I exactly. I, um, yeah, I, I have no time to happily uh, send you a reminder. Thank you. And we didn't hear from the person that you thought might want to serve. I'll have her email. I'll have her email you. I just didn't get a chance to speak okay. to her. And I just saw your email. I just looked at your email this morning. So I'll have Jenny. Yeah. Jenny was on the board off and on for many years and was really active in getting the easement put on the property in the first place. So it would be great to have her back on. Yeah. And I will try to convince her to potentially become a full member rather than just an adjunct so that we are. Uh, yeah, it, so that we have a completed right. So if, if that, you know, if she's only willing at first to be an alternate, then we'll appoint her as an alternate, and 
and then we would have to go back and appoint her so a full member. And there were two other guests that came that are new to town within the last couple of years, and they were like, they thought it was fun. I'm like, oh my god, what can I send you up to do if you think this is fun? <laughs> um, but I will also follow up with them and see if they have any yeah, interest in excellent. participating. So it was the first. Yeah. Conservation Commission meeting I've ever been at that actually had guests who wanted to come. <laughs> so you, they weren't invited; they just showed up. They, we've been posting a lot on social media, yeah. and they were oh, kind of following that's it on social media. Congratulations! So that's great. Yeah, so it was that's cool. wonderful. But, um, the third thing was, and this was part of what they were very interested in, was, and I've bantied this around, and I don't know. I, I might have talked to Mike about it once or twice in the past, but um, the commission would be very interested in working with, organizing, spearheading, participating in some kind of ad hoc committee to create an ac uh, economic development plan that will preserve character. And it came up even in the conversation we were having before with Paul and the gentleman who lives on Bear Road. Just doing something to try to take that industrial zone that we have and potentially brand and market the town in a way that we could attract the kind of business that we would want to come, review things that we're doing with zoning, so, so that we can do whatever we have the power to do to stop it from going crazy to Dover. I mean, we, we, we are this tiny little piece now of not so, Dover. So what this board has talked about it is just a, a, a subset of that, and that is with regard to the village and how, how could we think about ways you know, if we're going to if we're going to put sores or repair our, our stormwater infrastructure and the roads and the sidewalks, we need to know if there's a bigger goal that this infrastructure fits into. And so we've talked about envisioning kind of a situation. And uh, as you know, I'm, I mean, I'm just not going to be here, but some of the resources are either Stratford Regional Planning Commission or Plan New Hampshire. I don't know. If, are you familiar with Plan? I'm not. Plan New Hampshire is a nonprofit, and they are available to do some of this thing, probably for less than Strapper Regional, but it's it's not clear to me. I have no idea <coughs> to follow up, and I won't be here to follow up. But I, I know that I I think the key, a key is the village, and trying to figure out how to... Well, and because of all my years of being involved with the library and getting to know the mill community really well, I'm really privy to that aspect of it. But I think it is a two a two piece proposition. So you could build. So and right. Have so it could look be at the you know we we heard the Michael Point and Dana Lynch present about you know Jimmy's like new building is going to be like the very end of the industrial zone on this end, all the way through to the overpass. That whole strip is all half the people in the conservation commission didn't even know that that field beyond the overpass is, is zoned industrial. Like they're not aware of it. Uh, Stratford Regional came 20 years ago to the school gymnasium and did a program for us. It was a half day program. There were 40 residents that showed up and they had maps and people said, you know, where would you want to see development? And they projected out what could potentially happen and it was like this great conversation and it was an amazing program and it never really went anywhere. So it would be great to re-engage the community about yeah. that. And I'll tell you, the people that were there as guests and some of the people that have joined the Conservation Commission that are new to town, that really is what they're interested in. Yeah, I, I, I think the town needs it. I, I think, you know, I mentioned this here about an, a, a growth ordinance for the planning board to, to consider. Because, you know, some of these big fields, I mean, they get sold and, and you know, all of a sudden our, our demands on infrastructure and maintenance and repair of roads, I mean, it will just well, and school. go crazy. And, and school. Because if you build another Stockdale on Bear Road, you're going to have a lot we of kids. Will not have, we will not be able oh, to Oh, we'll maintain. have to do, what, K through 3 or something. I mean, yeah. be, exactly. Yeah. It, it's going to be. So it changes the entire nature of what we are. <coughs> Absolutely. So it's nice to engage people. the citizenry of the town to yeah. see, well, what are we thinking about any of these okay. things? What, you know, what do we think we could do? And what do we, what do we, do we think about Rollins Road? Where we want it to go, how do we want it to think about these things? So, the, the best way to do it, I don't know. It's going to require, you know, the board and, and other, you know, if it's the conservation commission that can help us, you know, try to figure out the plan, a, a planning mechanism, either through Plan New Hampshire or Stratford Regional. I know that uh, when we talked to, he's really a, a good guy, he's a good person, uh, the economic development person at Stratford Regional. It's new. Mm. About a year after I came on the board, they got 
they got something tacked on to their charter, which was economic development yep. through the Department of yep. the US Department of Commerce. And so what is his name? I can't believe I can't believe I can't think of it. Can't he's he's it. their their go-to guy. So he's the one who came to talk to us about, you know, possible visioning. Do we hire you to write an RFP for visioning? And you know, he says, Well, yes, you can, but it would cost me money and actually maybe plan the hampshire would do it to you for nothing. Jim. 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 James. James Burdine. Or yes. Burdine. James yeah. Burdine or Burdine. Yeah. Thank you. He's not Jim. He's James. So a really good person to talk to. So. In your experience, is there enough time between now and when we have town meeting again to organize something where anything that might need to be voted to be approved or organized could happen? You could, there's time to think about a, a planning effort, you know, with a price tag associated with it. Mm -hmm. So if, if you talk to Plan New Hampshire and they says, well, here's what I think you need to do and it would cost like, you know, $12,000 or whatever it is, then that can go on warrant mm. and that would have to happen you know. well I mean I, we also we have money so there's a chance that the Conservation Commission might agree that it's worthwhile to invest mm -hmm. in a, a project like that yeah. mm -hmm. if that's right. within the purview of us spending our money on yeah. something I mean I would prefer to see it be spent on something like that that has those long-term implications yeah. broadly because the, the, the town community. doesn't you know we, you know we are badly in need of in my mind we can't do a, enough strategic planning or visioning or whatever, because it's what what allows you to think through all, a host of things that come your way. Otherwise, you're just making individual decisions in a vacuum, and it's it's frustrating for me. Maybe maybe other people. How do how do zoning or or ordinances like that do they do they go through town meeting to change? Yes. Do they have to go through yes. town meeting? The, the the planning board hosts them. I mean, they host the public here, and mm -hmm. I think they actually have to approve it themselves or it's recommend it. To send it to the ballot. Yeah. yeah, and then it goes to the it, and it's. Before SB2, it, it, they would have been on the printed ballot regardless. Now everything's on the printed ballot. Okay. Yeah. And we've, we've just submitted a request to the planning board for a change of the zoning ordinance. There's a timeline, there are deadlines that we have to do proposals by. And, and state statute. Is not okay. So those would be under, like... Well, uh, um, so if you were going to suggest a change of the zoning ordinance now, they, they have to be able to hold a public hearing such that these warrants can be on the ballot. So, you know, there's January or something. The Municipal Association usually has the they print the calendar. There's like a month deadline, a month yeah. before okay. all the other deadlines. Okay. It's a, the zoning has to be done really early. But that's if you're actually going to change the zoning. If you're talking about a warrant to to see if the town wants to spend some money to, to have a plan a planning mm -hmm. process, yeah. then that that's a little bit later. Right. And what is it that you're doing? What is the what is the change that you're trying to make? Oh, we, we also, in my never-ending quest to make ourselves more efficient and to not get ourselves out of, like, operational, you know, uh, just rubber stamping things, building permits. We have a building inspector who, who reviews all building permits, and he signs off on them, but it's not sufficient because our zoning ordinance says that we have to sign them. The same for certificates of occupancy. So there are three sections at the end, one on building permits, one on certificates of occupancy, and one on... Uh, um, uh, enforcement. And so we want to change what currently says uh, select board to select board or designated building inspector, something like that. So that's that's the change and in those or. three, pardon? And or. And or, something like that, but in those three sections. And he'd be acting as your agent. Yes, you which he, enforce. yeah, ex exactly. Yeah. I mean, it was, in my mind, and an excellent thing for us to turn over the initial review of building permits to him because he's 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 provided consistency. He's increased our revenue because you know we look at a deck and we go, I don't know, we don't know what, what it is and so whatever whatever the applicant says, well it he will he will look to his standards and and know the average value of something like that. So if it looks too low, he'll he'll just raise it. So you know and it's consistent and that's. And people are confused too. Sometimes people think it's what they pay for a project, and it's not really what the building permit is based on. It's the value that you're adding to your building. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's the that's the purpose of. But trying. this whole like zoning thing about the classics roads and all that that is not in play as something that we're trying to fortress and make stronger so that we don't have to have this conversation every five months when Paul Connolly gets another client. I don't know how to answer that. 
You're not pursuing any kind of attempt to strengthen zoning or or against building on a class six road. Well, as Michael says, I mean, it already says we don't allow it. So they but we we do. So obviously we don't allow it until we do. Yeah, that's my point. We're allowed to 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 say yes in certain circumstances. Actually, we're allowed to say yes or no in any of the circumstances. We don't have to give any rhyme or reason to allow a building permit. But the planning board does have to give rhyme or reason as to why they done what they've done. So, but anyways. So the planning board and the zoning would really be the place that you would look to try to make it I a little so. bit your more. Your planning document, yeah, and, and uh, you know, we, we don't have a lot of resources to throw at the, or have them. So any place that we can try to make ourselves better, mm -hmm. particularly with regard to growth, I mean, that's... It could be updating the master plan. Yeah. And we work on that. We have, usually have John Krebs do a, a chapter every other year or so. Um, it could be as, as simple as updating that to, to reflect other realities. And I think we've heard time and time again that folks want to preserve the rural character of the town. Um, every time there's a project that comes up in someone's neighborhood that they don't like, that's the arg first argument they use. So. I know that uh, there are n n uh, growth ordinances that have been upheld. You know, yeah, some of them are some. Have, have gone down in flames because they're not constitutional. Right. But some towns have managed to write some that are that have been right. upheld. And so, you know, well, there's some towns in the state that are very strict. Yeah, so people we don't even ask anymore because they know that they're going to hear no consistently, yeah, so and it's not going to happen. So that's what I. And that's not good though either. <laughs> it's just not. You, you can't discourage all growth. I mean, you want you don't if we, if we don't want to encourage young. You were just talking about class. No, no, but no, no. But I'm saying, you know, in general, there are some towns like Greenland in Northampton <coughs> just say no to everything unless you have several acres zoning. If you don't have a, a, a lot of land, you don't get a building permit. Don't even ask. I mean, it's but we don't want to do that. Don't we want to encourage young families to be able to prosper here? I mean, so I get it. We don't want to turn. The Dodge Farm and attract housing. I get that. I don't either. But I think we need to be sensible about it's, what we yeah, do. It's we're more. Doing. It's not. It's not. For me, it's not so much the type of housing. It's just the rate at which we grow. Well, it's that. what it's it's you know it's what can we realistically sustain within the parameters of what we are. Right. And what can you and if we're not going to try to protect that in some of ways that other towns do more strictly than we do, then we're going to become something different. And I think that what I hear from people all the time when I'm at the Conservation Commission or I go to Stratford Regional Planning's events where they talk about what do you want, when I hear rural character of the town, it's not because somebody's building something in their backyard and they don't like it. It's because they want the fields and the open space and the feeling of the, the rural character. That's what people want. How do we do that? And I can tell you, <coughs> if you had that conversation with people, you'd have a majority of people in this town that would agree with whatever kind of regulation you wanted to pass to keep that. Because I think the majority of people that live in this town do want that. It's a majority so, of people that want to take advantage of the So that's why a visioning, or whatever you call this process to, that, that brings us in together to have these kinds of conversations, is a good one, because it... it, it broadens that conversation. It's not just the two of us or the four of us right. talking. And that's what we need. Now how do we how do we make that happen? You know how do we make that happen? Well you know, because we, you know, we, we, we get stuck in a lot of operational day to day things and it's very hard for a board. It seems like part of what the role of a conservation commission could be though is to is to bring that conversation that would to be the more. Beautiful. It seems like it's within the purview of that group's mission to do that. Uh, and I would say take, you know, James Burdine would be a good resource at Stratford Regional, Plan New Hampshire, and Caroline has um, has gone to some workshops, you know, at, when, at the Municipal Association annual meetings about Plan New Hampshire. So she has a little bit of, it's probably all down, but some information. Yeah. So those are two resources to, to think about. Well, I'll ask, also ask the Municipal Association if there are limits on what you can and can't spend your money on. Oh, yeah, that, that would, would be good. Sense. Yeah, I mean, yeah. they might not allow. Yeah, thing. that's a good so, point. I mean, yeah, good point. Or there may be limits on how. And does it, does John Krebs solely work for the planning board, or does he have the ability to do like a master plan project that might be accelerated or, or more focused on than? He well, he does done. what we ask him to do, yeah. and he would do what this board asks okay. him to do. Is he the absolute right person? I don't know. You know, there are some other places where we can get that yeah. kind of service. 
you know, Stratford Regional Planning, who, you know, is a not, they're not, I don't know what their charter is, they're, they're quasi-governmental, whatever, yeah. but, you know, they're generally speaking not for-profit thinking people, so that gives you a kind of a different yeah. look on what you might okay. do. Thank you. Well, thank you, Tamara, yeah. for coming. Nice I to see you. I appreciate you. Nice to see you. Hearing me, and um, the very last thing is um, there was some material put into a wetland, and we found out about it at the Conservation Commission. Um, who would I take that up with? DES? Yeah. Okay. DES. DES. Tom might be able to give you a, a contact point. I would take DES though, but yeah, I would ask Tom, DES, send Tom yeah. an email. I know that we've sure. had DES come look at the junkyard, for example, for okay. cutting along the river. That's not that wasn't actually allowed in the past. So, but what division and what you know, I don't okay. know. And Tom may be able to. Well, there's only two: there's water and air at DES. So Is that it, it? Sounds like okay. water to me. Yes. Yeah. So. All right. Well, technically both, but. Well, fair enough. But. <laughs> All right. Cool. Thanks. All right. Thank you. Other department headed business. Maybe we should take up the uh, budget. Yes. Stuff yes. So, so the board can go home. Well, There's so they can stay. But. Here's did I so I gave you I think the quarterly report and I think I also gave you a, a proposal. And let me bring up that up on my machine because I didn't print out a child definition. Really helpful. It is. Well, we're, we're, we just, we finished with the park, we finished yeah, with, no. we're in the park, the uh, town administration, but we're going right to budget. Okay. Quarter two budget. What about the bank? So the proposal that I um, submitted to you was to, um, and, and some of this would, I believe, would have come up for 2019 consideration anyway. But um, it was a proposal for both providing uh, administrative support to the town and also the issue of the bailer at the transfer station. So, um, and and. Related things. So I guess proposal for maybe personnel because it's not just administrative support. So we've already actually <clears throat> acted on two of these items. One was the transfer station manager, which we did last week, and the other one is to was the our road agent's annual salary, which we did tonight. So those things we've, we've already done. The other the other things that I'm proposing to the board is to consider uh, hiring a bookkeeper to remove some of the, the bookkeeping, uh, to remove the bookkeeping duties from Caroline, who would oversee the bookkeeper. And um, that would be, so So there's a detail sheet for each of these. So if you see bookkeeper at a cost of $3,000 for FY18, if you look at the, the bookkeeper page, it, it's, I costed it as, at an hourly rate of $17, because that's an hour, 10 hours a week. Uh, 16 weeks, it starts September 1. Um, so the salary would be 2800 and the payroll tax is $214. So, and then you see the annualized cost. So that, that would be a bookkeeper. Uh, the other thing is to, you know, whether you have a title change or no title change, I called it executive assistant. It's not the title that I particularly care about, but I wondered if you wanted to consider increasing Caroline's hours to full-time, 40 hours full-time, so that she can come to these meetings, for one, because the follow-through is what I think you will find the most difficult when I leave, because one of the things that I do is prepare for Monday's meeting and then do a follow-up that came from our meeting during the remaining week. And, for example, when I was not here, like, maybe last January or something, and I think, Mike, you and Jody did an ordinance change to the transfer station. 
but it was never communicated to anybody. So we had to do we did it all over again because nobody could find a signed copy. Uh, nobody knew it was done. Those those are the sorts of things that have a tendency to happen when things that we do here don't have someone trying to execute them. So so that would <coughs> allow you to uh, have her come here and do follow-up. Now, it costs more if you're meeting every week. Uh, not really. I take that back because it, it, it would be a salary. So what she does for those hours is her own. So I take that back. That was just plain wrong. Um, so her, she is salary, not hourly? She is salaried. Uh, no, she is out, hourly. Sorry, she is hourly. Uh, she is hourly. Right. But if you were going to increase it to 40 hours, whether she uses that 40 hours to come here to a meeting or not, that would be the board's decision. I was just... Oh, within her 40-hour work yeah, week, yes. you're saying yes. Kelsey's hours. Yes. Gotcha. Yeah. So I just said, I just was okay. just too long. So, so I costed that out. If you look at that sheet, you know, at a increasing her hourly rate too, because now she'd be supervising uh, the bookkeeper, and uh, by a dollar an hour. So, the cost this year, salary wise, would be about forty-seven hundred payroll taxes, and the Hampshire retirement system would give you a total of the just under fifty-six hundred dollars for this year. And then the bailer. So, can I ask a question? Absolutely. What would she? What would she be doing at the meeting? Would she be taking minutes again? No, no. She would be here taking down the things that have to be done. For the entire meeting, sitting here. Well, that the board doesn't have to do that. The board doesn't have to do that. So, um, the bailer. So we've got, what I figured, what I, I took the quotes that uh, George presented to us, and I took the $850 a month rental, you know, the one where there's no interest charge, we're going to pay $850 a month all the way through next April 1, and assuming that the town approves the remainder, we'd have the bail. They're going to apply that to the, to to the, the sale. full price, yes. Okay. So if the town doesn't approve, then we pay $850 a month, a lot of money for a bail that we no longer have access to. But that, that's what would happen. Um, so, so the cost for that in FY18 would be $3,400. Uh, the electrical, I estimated at five. We, we don't know yet. There's a pad for $650. And I took away $500 for a, a, the trade-in on our current bailout. Does that sound about right? So for a total of FY18 dollars of $8,550. So the total of those proposals are $18,960. And you can see the source of funds over on the right. The potential source of funds, right? I just scoured the thing. So we could bail out on community assistance this year, which is the welfare line, with the exception of uh, the money for Meals on Wheels, which you said $100 last week, and um, we usually give Seeds of Faith, I think $500 or so for that. Um, uh, I would be willing to donate my stipend for administrative support purposes. The stipend that I have already earned from the beginning of January through July. But only only to help administrative support, not to pay for an increase in street lighting or anything like that. Uh, repairs and maintenance of the fire station. There's, uh, you know, we've done 7,000 two years in a row, and maybe uh, with the work that the highway department is doing with the pad, maybe we could ask Chief Rutherford if he would uh, could return a thousand of that. Somebody would have to talk to him about that. Uh, we did ask George and Ed tonight if they could find $1,200 in some of their budget dollars uh, to do that. And we've got about $900 left in mileage reimbursement, and we could just, you know, let the town know, I mean, let our staff know that we're freezing it. Uh, it still gives us $300 to, for the training that is sort of planned for Ed and transfer station attendants to get. This is just to get reimbursed for the mileage, not for the training itself. And then I think we have $10,000 in professional services. So that would give us, that covers the proposal. Could we get more money? Uh, 
there's a little bit of money in the admin clerical line as is because Salome doesn't use it all up. Uh, there would be more if you went to two meetings a month, but uh, that may not happen. Uh, welfare, I know we had that horrendous uh, case at the beginning of the year, but even with that, we are on a spending rate to to uh, have a surplus, I don't want to call it a surplus, but uh, have a surplus of $8,600. So there's there's that possibility too. There could be more money in vehicle repair maintenance. There could be some money in IT hardware software services. I don't know. And also, departmental give backs is another way to try to get more money. But um, I think the sources up at the top should work. So, you know, you can ponder that, think about it. I just you know, saying where, I, I, I did some work to do how much I think it would cost and where you might get that money from. So if you thought that you didn't want to, you want to cogitate some more on the personnel related stuff, but on the bailer, maybe you wanted to act sooner than later, uh, the money for that could come out of, you know, professional services, the, the $1,200 and, and um, $1,200 that you know, they already, that George and I think they can glean from their own budget. So, so this wipes out the entire professional services line? No, no. no it doesn't. Some. Yeah, there, I think there's four. It's 4000 Let me Let me just double check that one. Because there'll be money that we'll need for Oak Street. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And anything else I can check? Well, None of this is, I mean, all of this is sort of difficult, right? It's always, it comes down to. Oh, you also have a show funds, correct? We have to make sure we have yep. enough to address that. Right. Yeah, I don't know what to say about REC. I'm kind of in the black of the weird dark. Well, so I mentioned it at the last meeting that we're about down <coughs> 4,000 with Raleigh, but up 2,000 with T. So down two and all. Is what I know today. I don't know what it, I got pronounced from Caroline, and I'm going to talk to D. But approximately, that's where we are. All right. um, but so, I mean, I would go maybe a little higher than two because I'm not sure. I know that they got um, additional um, registrations for um, T. <coughs> um, so I'm not 100% sure where. Um, team was, but last I knew we, we were up a couple thousand dollars in the net of them. So, so the welfare could, could cover that. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think that, um, I mean, and I, I, I might be wrong here, but the, how do you decide to manage the sort of change in administrative support that will happen when I go is, is entirely up to the board. The, the, the issue, and so you might want to, might well want to think about that some more, and I understand that, that it's your decision. The Baylor, there, you know, I, Yeah, I agree. The Baylor needs to be addressed tonight. Be, and wow. because what, what, what we're, what, the, the downside is, can be bad. Right. Right. Well, that's what I was going to ask you. What does it cost if we don't do it? Yeah, well, that's, 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 we don't have right. that figure, right? I mean, it's much larger. Isn't it? it could be because we don't know what's happened. What we think we know is happening in the recyclables market, and that is it's not going in the right direction. Right. right. Hauling is going to cost us more. Right. So, because the price of gas is going up. So, to the extent that we can compress our, to our benefit. cut down the number of hauls by getting a bailer is to our benefit. So, the, it, another, um, you know, we are, it's how long is it going to take George to get it here? Six What's, weeks. Six weeks. By the time we provisioned it and had the Yeah, so it will give a little bit of time for, not a lot, for the board to try to assess what, how that affects next year's budget. You know, how much of, I, I don't know that there will be a savings. I know that they will be, we'll be paying less than we would be otherwise. For sure, that's, that's a certainty. We will be paying less than we would be otherwise. As far as a return on the investment and how long that is, based on what, how cost by price, because we don't know that, it's, it's hard, right? 
So. Well, I agree with you. I think that we need to. I, I would prefer to hold off on the, um, the the personnel related issues until I have some more time to digest it. It's a it's a big change. Yeah, understood. But the Baylor. Baylor, I think we need to address. Denise, do you want to talk about the Baylor? What do you think about trying well, to act I think the Baylor tonight? Do it for sure. I mean, I, I think it's an investment well worth it. I mean, what I'm hearing guys saying and. I just think it's something that we have to do. And I think the guy's giving us a really good break and in letting us rent it right. until we can get the yeah. authority. And I, you know, you're not going to get that anywhere else, I don't think. So, do we actually have any paperwork? Did, did we have paperwork? Everything that I gave you, everything. We had the contract to sign on. Is it in the purchase part of it? Buying the old one, he wanted to sign something with that, you know, purchase agreement or whatever. Uh, I don't have it with me. I might have it. So the, the one thing we're we're unclear of though is the electrical. Right. I'm going to call a couple more electric companies. And I'll call the two that we have. Right? The Minister Electric from town, and I'll find another one and get right more in there. Okay. Well, I tell you what, so you've got a board saying, yes, we're going to do this. So, but we need to have the paperwork. Yep, and I understand that. So, yeah. so it, hopefully by next Monday, we also need to know what that electrical is, because it's yeah. too... I'll push them to get me some places yeah. this week. Right. So, hey, if we could have whatever, if okay. it's a contract proposal, plus the purchase order, mm -hmm. and uh, then that would be helpful, and, and also an approximation idea of the electrical. Then the board can make a decision next week. We'll just be the two of us, I think. But the board is clearly, I think we're ready to move forward on it. So we just need to get off all the paperwork here and take an official vote. And then we can <coughs> go forward with the planning recycling. Okay? Thank you. I'll look up. Oh, I got to, if I, if I should have my file around this point. I got to hold the talk if I have to get the talk here. And board, you've got the rest of the stuff, so you can kind of look that over and... Well, I might have it. If it was if it was in the folder last week, we might have did what we had to do. Or did yeah, we have I to discuss it? Do we all bring I don't know. I might know. want to check the front Yeah, I'll check with it tomorrow, okay. but I'll also look in my file and make sure we have it. Okay. Well, it's a government off the go Club. <laughs> all right. So, um, all right. So we're, so we're kind of done with the those big potential budget revisions. But what I would like to do is go through the quarter two budget, which Denise is now looking through. And I've had to make some budget, I've had to, I'm recommending some budget changes based on other things. Are we good? Yep. Yes. Yep, we're all set. Thank you so much. All right, guys. So, uh, if you take a look at that, the sort of dark, if you look at the revised budget column, Okay, we, we did some revisions in quarter one. They were just payroll taxes. And so they're in the darker pink, mm -hmm. just a couple of places. So the yellow ones are this quarter. Okay. So you can see I pretty much emptied out the contingency. Okay. And where did it go? All right, so take a look at under personnel administration. There's a slight increase to paychecks, um, just to sort of keep us in line. Uh, training, I increased that to cover the ZBA training that um, we agreed to. Uh, let's see, under in row 65, we had budgeted 5000 to sort of cover termination payments in case someone terminated and we need to pay sick, if they are still, we still owed them sick, or vacation, or any insurance adjustments, a single becomes a merit and stuff. So you can see that I sucked it all up. Again, it's a proposal, right? So let's follow down. Row 86, I think, heat in the fire station. So for these utilities, I did some uh, uh, projections based on how much have we spent this year in quarter two versus how much did we spend at this point last year in quarter two. Yeah. And I looked at quarter two spending in FY17 and then how much we ended up spending at all and said what proportion of the total spending did the quarter two represent the whole, and then use that to project uh, fiscal year 18. 
So based on that, heat in the fire station, I added nine hundred dollars. Electricity in town hall, I am just astounded that that now has an eighteen thousand dollar budget. But that's what I'm projecting. Uh, electricity in the transfer station is up five hundred. I guess that's it for utilities. The rest were sort of in line. Um, so most of that came out of contingency. Stormwater management, I sucked a little bit out of that to do something. So we had five thousand. We uh, we've got forty three hundred forty left with a thousand dollars spent. It's not clear to me that we're going to have expenses there the remainder of the year. I don't know. We're still working on the notice of intent, but I think we're getting a lot of free help. So we may not have any more expenses there. Street lighting, again, that, that, that went up $3,000 based on uh, what we've spent already and where that, how that related to last year's spending. Uh, transfer station attendance, I think we didn't have enough. We've got that Saturday morning person now, and so when I did the numbers, you know, we're still just a little bit over 50%, but we're certainly closer with the amount that I've added. And then it affects payroll taxes. Um, I took a little out of health and safety. I added some of that to uniform cleaning because there's just a lot more uniforms that are being cleaned. Caroline said we used to have three pieces, now there are 11 pieces and whatnot. So we got, I added $1,000 there. Uh, telephone, I actually don't know what the story is, but we didn't have enough money, so I transferred some. And oh, that's it. So it was mostly putting money into utilities and street lighting, and then some smaller adjustments here and there. So I will go to the budget committee with these these revisions, not not anything else, but not mm -hmm. just those which are the ones that we would be doing regardless if I were here or if I were not here. Are you okay with those budget revisions? Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, the other thing that I would uh, note going forward, I just you know, I just made some notes, so I'm going to read, books, oh, gonna read it with you. Mm -hmm. So just pay attention to the planning consultant line, because you know that was the one where we paid uh, the attorney. Mm -hmm. And so I don't know if you're going to need it revs at a higher rate than you normally do, but you'll have to sort of be watchful of that one. And then the transfer station line. You know, I've, I've upped it a bit. Is that sufficient? And then, of course, the transfer station in general. You're going to need to see what budget implications exist after the dust settles on all of these changes. So some of that is <coughs> um, I think if there are, you know, I don't know about the cost of gasoline. You know, but you might want to consider for the highway, the police, and, and the um, fire that if the, any deficit in those lines just are covered by the them, that they would cover those lines. And in general, any deficit, you know, if, if they just really need to stay within their, their budget. And of course, Chief Duchamp tonight was so gracious with uh, what he said. And then, <clears throat> and then we're going to have to watch the expenses that plan to be covered by revenue. So one is the RPD detail, which is not, uh, there's some things that aren't listed there, but that, you know, our invoicing or whatever hasn't quite caught up, but it's not what I was expecting, so that's that's an issue that we need to watch and pay attention to in the rec, mm -hmm. which we can know about. Uh, revenue. These are... Um, Did I give you revenue? Mm -hmm. Did I, I, did I give you, all right, here's capital. Let's do capital first. So there's no surprise there. I mean, it's just the spending on the service truck, the cruiser. Did we get the mowing attachment? Oh, George, it's not here. I wonder if it came out of his own operating budget. So did he, got, we got that. This is the service truck, this is the cruiser. This is the roadside. Hmm, that's interesting. Let me make another map of Carolina. I'm 
sorry, I didn't I didn't notice that the first time through. So where would you buy it would come out of? I'm, I don't know. I wonder. I know we paid it out of out of the highway department, just the operating. Yeah, I, I don't know. It, I know it was less, but. find out where that is. This is reserve funds. There's usually never any activity until the very last quarter. And here is Rotary. It doesn't look like it's showing up. Yeah, uh, so I don't know where it is. I'll have to ask Caroline. It's not enough. There isn't enough posted. No. Yeah. No. I, say, well, I know it was a warrant, so it should have come out of the warrant. Yes. Exactly. Right. We're not, and, and we know he's purchased it, and we're not seeing it against the warrant. So we have to, it's a question that I'm going to ask to see what the answer is. So I'm trying to look at mine to see if there's anything that. He said, I don't know what the resident tax is so far, so that's not posted yet. Um, you know, I didn't, uh, uh, the police detail is, is a concern, but otherwise, um, things are, seem to be moving along. We don't get room and meals tax until the, third, until the last quarter. We don't get we don't finish our highway block grant until the last quarter. So the thing with the police detail, and this is what, this is a why it's, it would be good to have some other way to manage this other than our operating budget is that we because we we receive more than the expense, some of what we planned it's covering other expenses. Mm -hmm. So if there's a if there's a less that comes in the police detail, it has a bigger hit. Is there a reason why the details are down? Um, okay. Well, we have, I haven't seen much of any kind of other companies here who are required to have. The no, details. but they go out of town. They go out so. of town. Oh, I know. Well, there's there's a I in the relationship with Lee. Oh, wow, well, yeah. So, yes. It's awkward. I don't I would prefer not to like, yeah, say um, anything correctly, right. but there's been a change in the relationship between our police department and theirs. And the chief has, the chief of the league. police department, to my understanding, has found someone else to provide police detail. I'll just put a period there. So awkward. It has an impact. All right. It is, is there anything else that I can help with with regard to the budget? I haven't written a summary. I will write a summary that I'd like to give to the budget committee. I'll send it to us first. We're not going to be able to meet before, but we can sort of respond. Um, all right. So that's the budgets. Uh, we're at item B now, Sally. So the Northeast Archaeology Research Center, Inc. Uh, we heard from them, we heard from a, a research scientist, and she is asking for permission to do test pits uh, and uh, two plots on either side of the thing that have, in order to support the relicensing effort. Yeah. So, did you see the uh, questions to her and her mm -hmm. responses? Yeah, minimal size. Minimal. 
minimal size, they're going to they put it on. back, they fill them back. But it's part of the relicensing effort. Mm -hmm. So I will tell her yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right, Oak Street Memorandum of Agreement. That's not just the Memorandum of Agreement. It's actually how are we going to manage uh, the, at Oak Street repair that maybe 2020 or that sort of. And so I don't think it's right for me. I, the meeting may not come about even before I leave, but it just seems more practical to have one of you. So I said that I would check in and see which name I should offer up to the woman who's doing the schedule. Is that I'm okay with it. Oh, no one else about it. Okay. Uh, the zoning board of adjustment training. We've heard from uh, Charlie. It was a great success. I think it's a wonderful thing. Um, they were very pleased. That all of his all of his board was there. And so. the planning too, right? No. Was it just ZBA? I think, I think they were inviting planning. Oh, but, okay. um, certainly all of his board, all okay. of the ZBA okay. board was there. It'd be nice to have them uh, doing things the way they're supposed to be doing things. So, town hall maintenance. Uh, Mike, I'll try to get a better uh, idea now of what's left in that budget. Sure. And send I, it off to you. I'll send a reminder yeah, to Yeah, and then Patrick. we can see if they match. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so we'll just see. Uh, transfer station. Smoking policy. I don't know if you want to keep that on the agenda. That was something you were going to sort of. I don't. I don't. You know, that's not something that. It's not the number one. Priority exactly. Yeah, that's so. exactly right. So I'm asking. Do you we want? We should keep it on. Just keep, keep it on the agenda so we don't lose sight of it. That would be helpful. Yeah. Sure then. enough. Anything to say about uh, recreation, Denise? Um, there. How many more weeks? It's more, done. Today was the halfway point. Oh, it's just it's the halfway point. Five. Five more weeks. We're in week five, so it was, um, so it's only three more. That's it? Yeah, three, three right? more. Yeah. Um, oh. f for Camp Raleigh and two more for Teen Camp, because yep. they're a week short. Okay. So, I mean, it's going good. I haven't had, um, I haven't been approached by too many issues. Um, we're going to meet as a committee, um, soon to discuss what's good, what was bad, yeah. what was, you know, learned. It, lessons, lessons learned. learned. Yep, it's always good. Um, we're trying to get it across that people have to get permission before spending money. And so this seems to be a hard lesson that's difficult to yeah. teach people. It is. Um, but it's a work in progress, and we're definitely trying to 
work that out. Yes. Um, so, you know, they have to go through the chairs, and the chairs can come through me. And until, but it's spending the money and then asking for permission. It's yes. like, that can't There's happen anymore. There's no point anymore. of doing that, right? That can't happen anymore. So, um, I'm going to go through, I'll try to give you the best answers I have on where we stand financially. Um, so, but yeah, I think it's going okay. Right. I think it's a success. One six year old that really likes yeah. it. Oh, is she having a good time? She loves it. Oh, yeah, that's excellent. Good. Uh, transfer station post closure report. I think that's there because we have to do it. We have to do it. Now, so, yeah. Yeah, so, so yes, that's good time. Uh, Paul's integrity. Caroline said it's hard to ask Tom to send a reminder letter with conditions that we don't know really exist. Yeah. So, it's there on the agenda. Because we're looking for, we need to find a copy of the. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think. Uh, maybe he's calling. Is that do I do I remember that correctly? He may be calling the engineer. That actually, you know, this is. You know what I mean? But what we're stuck. Yeah, no, no. It's no. like you know when I when I couldn't find our contract for our Kate for Comcast, I ended up calling Comcast. Do you have a copy of it? Mm -hmm. So sometimes you just have to do that. Um, so visioning, you, you you know, we came up with Tamara, so we can leave it on the agenda if you if you want. Uh, next um, Monday will be an awards presentation with the RPD, so Mike and I will be uh, will be here to help present the award. And uh, that's all I have uh, until we get to the standing items. Is there anything that I missed? All right, standing items. So board member activities and updates. There is a stormwater simple stormwater coalition meeting this week. That's going to be a short sleeve to do the first two pages of the notice of intent. I cannot go. I'm having a, uh, it just can't be there. So Caroline, I've asked Caroline to go. She is the best person because this is more administrative. Yeah. And George said he would go. And I said, I, I don't know if you were here when I had that conversation yeah. with him. I said, George, I don't think this is one. This really needs someone to take notes and, and mm -hmm. from an administrative yeah. standpoint. You seem fine with that. Yes, so that's what's going on there. Uh, anybody, anything happening? The two, two is of views? No, not just yet. No. All right. Well, we're working with Family Day. We're having a meeting this week. We're trying to get that all. We need to ask sometimes we need what, because um, Michelle's not part of it this year because her daughter's getting married. She said we talked about it at your meeting and what your plans were going to be. So we can touch base later. Okay. It doesn't have to be tonight. But all right. Kind of drop me an email now, maybe, or whatever your yes. plans are. Yes. We. So I, I think we found some people who might be there growing corn. What? And we've also talked about, you know, growing corn. You know, doing the having somebody do the Enviroscape, mm -hmm. even if it's not me. Mm -hmm. There was some other. Oh, bees. We're gonna, you know, uh, do something with bees. I think Hannah okay. and Steve. All right. So that's what, that's currently our okay. thought process. Yep. So just keep me in the loop of, yeah. so I can where to place you and how much room you need and all of that. Yeah, we're going to meet at the beginning of September, very beginning of September, so I'm hoping that's okay. soon enough to yep, that is get fine. Yep. all those details. So we're getting out. it all together and trying to coordinate, and so um, it's it's going good. We cool. have um, booked the fireworks and we're all set with that. And awesome. So. Excellent. Yep. And there's $500 in our budget, and, right? Yep, and I got it right here in my okay. wallet. <laughs> <laughs> Very good, then. There's the check. <laughs> Very good. Okay. Um, then uh, building permits and their correspondence. So what are we doing now? We're just signing. All right. All right. Okay. And the note, the minutes will just say that we signed building permits for, for our building inspector's thing, and they're online, available online at the town hall. Got a bunch of things to sign in there, uh, payment letters. I think they've just come with the chair as a sign. Mm -hmm. Not too lucky. For another week. I actually have a question on procedural anything, it just happened to notice it because it was on my check. Um, how does the process of um, signature for payroll here? The only signature on there. How's that get taken no, out? No, it's selected. It's, it's your name and current. It's not my name. It's, it's treasurer. Isn't it just treasurer and select board? They'll have to be changed. Okay, I'm just yeah, bringing it because yeah. I didn't know how that worked. Caroline will have another that. round. You know, it's yeah. too bad because we just did a round, but we'll have yeah. to do a whole other round. This is actually inked on the checks, the paycheck ones. I'm talking about that. Oh, paycheck.
paycheck. Yeah, checks. the paycheck ones. Oh. They're like a they're a pre-printed. Pre-printed, I think. Yeah. Oh, well, they will have It's going to take a little bit of time to get that taken care of, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah so yes. FYI. Um, oh. So I don't know if somebody could just sign next to that if, if until such time as, as if it's changed. Yeah, like it yeah, I don't, I don't yeah. really know. Could, well, you, could you give me a week? If this is a paper. Yeah, yeah, if you can give me a post-it from your, your little yes, office, I will um, check it for a minute. So the, are these? What, oh, oh these are these are yeah. actions that we've already taken. Correct. Oh, okay, so we're not making any decisions. Perfect. We've already decided. So, I so tomorrow. I could sign them tomorrow. Or tonight. Yeah, I think I will sign them tonight because I'm not going to be available tomorrow. So I'm just. This is just you know part of that process that we were mentioning last week. We're not letting people know. This lets everybody know. Okay, so. <coughs> Good, so we the one that we had yeah. to shut that's okay. this one here. All right. It was approved. Mm -hmm. Only three, right, Mike? Correspondence. I'll just sit here and sign. All right. We've got a um, memo from the select board. That's from us. This oh, is about the can I explain that? Absolutely. I wrote that this morning. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. So, um, <coughs> as part of the notice of intent for the stormwater uh, permit that we have to file, on page one, there's some eligibility requirements, and one of them has to do with the Endangered Species Act. And so we, uh, so let me just read to you what it says. With regard, so the subject matter is the Endangered Species Act eligibility determination with regard to the notice of intent for coverage under the EPA small MS4 general permit, effective 7-1-2018. With regard to the above, we confirm that there are two threatened species within the town of Rollinsburg. The northern long-eared bat, which is a mammal, and the small world begonia, which is a plant. No critical habitats have been designated for either species. That's right from the, I got that right from the fish and game. So here's what we're testing. Is it Pogonia? P-O-G-O-N-I-A. Small, but Small, small, it says that's its name, small world okay. We attest that there will be no adverse effects on either species with the town's stormwater management plan. That's all we have to say for that, <clears throat> but I wanted you to see it, and mm -hmm. I, with your consent, I will sign, I'll just sign this little memo. Small the small town, world, world begonia. I thought they were saying begonia too. Yeah. No, no, no. So what I did was I went on Fish and Wildlife. This is uh, U.S. Fish and Wildlife, not yeah. New Hampshire Fish and Game, U.S. Fish and Wildlife. Mm -hmm. They have a program which is useful for people who are actually having to prove things if they've got development plans. I did all of Stratford County because it, that was easy to do. Rollinsford, I would have to draw it out. So I did all of Stratford County. It just says that there are two, <clears throat> uh, two threatened species that list them. And somewhere on the EPA list it says if they have six species, if the ones that are in your district are these six. Yeah. See? Yeah. 
are in, so it says then, then you sign criterion C. So I signed criterion C. It's not that there are none there, but yeah. their habitat, they're not, the habitat's not threatened, and, um, th and this is what everybody in Stratford County is, is saying. So I will sign it. Yes. I just want to see what it looks like. Uh, somehow oh. online I saw a picture of it. It doesn't it didn't print out. Wait, how did you spell that? P O G O N I A. Can you give this to me? The world is W H O R L D. W World. 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 Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, oh, here. Can, can you give this to. They're, they're both here. They're interesting little plants. Well, actually, they're, they're probably on my cover letter, too. under the DARA grant that we received is to file this quarterly report, mm -hmm. at least this year, maybe, and then, th then it's annually for three years, something like that. So I'm just going to sign the information that our chief has already done. And he has the templates for each of the reporting periods. So when it does go to annual, you know, he'll see that, so it's all set up for him. sign after the meeting. So is, let me ask, is there any community input? Okay. Let's go home. Let's go home. I'll sit here quietly and sign. 